stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Excuse me. Welcome to tonight's planning board meeting. Please be aware of the fire exit, which is to the left of this room. In the event of an emergency, please move in a calm and orderly fashion down the stairs and do not use the elevator. The meetings are recorded by the secretary for the purpose of a record and minutes, so please identify yourself each time you come to the podium and speak into the microphone. The board will follow the items in the order that they appear on the agenda, extra copies of which are near the door. After the case has been called, the applicant or their representative shall come to the podium, identify him or herself, give his or her address, and then present their case. The planning board members will then have an opportunity to question the applicant. If this case is a public hearing, it will be open for public input, at which time anyone wishing to speak to the board regarding this application will come to the podium, identify themselves, along with their address, and direct any questions to the board. Once all public input has been completed, the applicant or site representative will give him the opportunity to respond to any public input. Once all public input has been completed and all questions have been satisfied, the case will be closed to public input, and the board will then move on to a decision. No further input will be allowed at that point. <coughs> Michelle or Carrie, if you'd introduce the first case, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The first item on the agenda is case number PB1511-1. Upon the matter of request by Lucy Elaine Hanford for signage approval to erect a freestanding externally lit sign on premises 620 Titus Avenue in a mixed-use commercial district. Hello, I'm Lucy Elaine Hanford. I reside at 362 Sagamore Drive in West Arundacoit. Could you just tell us a little bit about your application oh, before sorry. the board? And I am here this evening in regards to, um, I'm seeking signage approval for my business, the bakery I'm opening um, at 640 Titus Avenue called Sweet Sensations Desserts. <clears throat> I believe you all received a copy of the sign that I would like to um, have put up there. How big is the sign? The sign is 48 inches wide, so four feet. And you are externally lighting the sign? There is currently um, an exterior light, an LED light, um, that is set up on a timer. And it's approximately 40 inches off of the top of the planter? Correct. No, I'm sorry, it's on the ground. The sign is on the ground. Okay. I mean, the light is on the ground. Right. The sign total, total height is 40 inches. Jay, do you have any questions of this applicant? No, Mr. Chairman, no, sir. Thank you. Richard? Did, did you have a chance to review the letter that was provided by uh, the HIP group? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I, I just I appreciate their input, and... Uh, I just I think this sign fits perfectly for what the mixed use commercial district is uh, set up for, and I, I commend you for a nice uh, nice product. Thank you so much. Great. I I'm total agreement with the hip group's recommendations. I wish you every success. I like the sign. I like the way you're doing it. Thank you so much. Good luck. Thank you, Bernie. I think it looks good. I hope you have much success. Thank you. And Mary? I think it's a good idea. It's a long time coming. Good <laughs> luck. Thank you. I appreciate that. I agree also. Um, at this point, we'd like to open it up to public any input. Anyone wishing to do so may, or may comment in regards to this application may do so at this time. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ann Burns, and I live at 199 Bellhurst Drive, and I'm here speaking on behalf of the community group helping around a quite plan for progress. And we just wanted to commend Mrs. Hanford for um, selecting this location for her business in the Titus Cooper Hudson neighborhood. Um, this is a bakery was at the top of the list with ice cream and coffee at the two charrettes that we held, um, one back in, 
1999, a long time ago, and one in 2002 that we did in conjunction with the town. And uh, a bakery of this caliber, we're, we're really, really fortunate to have, have this in this neighborhood. And we just think that the proposed design for this sign being exterior lit, you know, meets all the design guidelines. It'll just fit in so nicely with what's already going on in the neighborhood. And um, we really think it'll really complete the upgrade of the Walther property. Um, Megan Mills um, has done such a nice job with the Farmers Insurance Agency. And I think this will just, just make the, the corner shine even more. So thank you so much. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, we'll close the public input portion. Um, at this point, I don't think there's any further. We don't need seeker for this. It's a type two action. I won't be frequenting your bakery until I lose another 40 or 50 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I Sorry. live on sweet stuff. It's there great. you go. <laughs> We're hoping to open by February 1st. So. It's time for Valentine's Day. Yes. Um, seeker type 2? It's type 2 action, correct, so no, no seeker review. I propose a motion at this point. <clears throat> I would make the motion that we approve uh, PB1511-1 upon the matter of request by Lucy Elaine Hanford. For signage approval to erect a freestanding externally lit sign at 620 Titus Avenue in the Muck District. Second, Mr. Chairman. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Seeing none, thank you for investing in Aronquake. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is case number PB1511-2. Upon the matter of request by APD Engineering and Architecture, acting as agent for Hospitality Syracuse, Inc., Taco Bell, for revised site plan approval to construct a plus or minus 303 square foot addition, modify sidewalk, drive through aisle, and site related improvements on premises 1599 East Ridge Road in an M manufacturing district. Good evening, my name is Amanda Brewer. I'm with APD Engineering and Architecture. With me is Chris Cambar. We are here representing Hospitality Syracuse. They're proposing to renovate their existing Taco Bell that is located at 1599 East Ridge Road. They're proposing to add a... You know, you might be better off. Why don't you use this mic instead for, if you'd like. It's, it's ready to go. Oh, okay, thank you. You're welcome. They are proposing to expand their store by three, 303 square feet to add an additional cooler freezer area. They're, they're, they're going to remodel the entire interior to be to their current prototype. For the site work, we are coming out of the building eight feet to add the cooler, cooler freezer expansion. We are modifying the existing sidewalk around the building to allow for ADA access around the new expansion. We are here, we are bringing back the current bull nose landscape island to make it easier for um, the drive through traffic to leave the site. We are modifying the existing drive through to allow it to be easier access for the customers. And we are planning to demo the existing dumpster and to um, create a new one that's going to match the building facade. <clears throat> I will say that last time I was at Taco Bell, I did jump the curb trying to get out of the drive-thru. That's what we heard, and that is why we're trying to make it better for the customers. We're bringing it back 19 and a half feet so that there's less likely of a jump of the curb. 
Luckily, I drive a Ford F-150. Didn't really make any difference, but... <laughs> um, Jay, any questions of the applicant? You you modified your plans because he can't drive? Is that... <laughs> am I hearing this right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it was always proposed that way, but it was incidental. I was there, and I actually could not make that turn. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, if someone's coming in, you can't make that turn. No comment. <laughs> hey, I got it for my wife. You have... You got all the, uh, the input from planning development... Etc. Yes, we received comments back from Monroe County and Labella, and we updated it and provided new site plans as well as a comment response letter, so it's easily identifiable. Right. Okay. And the from the site plan is the is there going to be any? There's really no change to um, imp impervious, right? Correct. If you look on the ES1 plan, post-construction impervious and um, prior construction impervious is the same at right. 0.51 acres. Right. Okay. I'm all set, Mr. Chairman. Richard? Uh, no questions. Ray? No questions. Bernie? No questions. Mary? I do. Okay. I, I frequent there a lot. I find the biggest problem... And I don't know if it can be remedied or not, but the cars parking on on the side there, if you come out and there's a line for the drive-through, you can't get out. Long side of the building, right hand side. Right here. No. The cars parked here. No, where you'd be lined up to go into the drive-through. Right there, yeah. There's there's cars here. Cars oh, aisle. okay. It is very narrow, and we've had to sit and wait for cars to, to get through the drive-thru before you get through. It's really narrow, narrow. Okay, we can look into that. Um, <coughs> there's not really what, much we can do. It's uh, 25 feet right here. There's, there's not much what we can do. Okay, I'm done. Peter, what would be typical? And, uh, oh, well, they're, they have the typical two-way drive aisle. Well, that's one way, so that's double the... We are, because we're bringing out the sidewalk in order to make the pinch point between the building and the sidewalk ADA compliant, we are bringing this down to 41.1 feet, but La, um, LaBella and Associates said that that is okay for one-way traffic. Mm-hmm. But you're saying, Mary, that the stacking space, the queuing, is precluding you from driving? Getting out of the parking spot there. Mm -hmm. the technically, side. that's you know two-way drive aisle, so only with one-way traffic. So technically, there should be adequate space on paper. But I think the practicality is that people are using the entire width and then blocking. Yeah. Is there a striping? Mm -hmm. Something you can do with striping? or? We are modifying modifying this radius we are modifying this it it's very narrow as you can see and we're bringing it larger so that it'll make a larger radius so that it'll make the turn into the drive through easier yeah, I, I do think that we're talking about the cars piling up to get through to the but drive I, I think part of the reason that cars carry themselves out so wide is that that entry into that drive through is very narrow and the exit is very narrow and right. i think what you're saying is hopefully you're improving that radius to allow people to make a tighter turn into it because Correct. it is very difficult to get in there. Correct. We are modifying. Do you have a surplus of parking? There are 31 spots. And code requires 24.2 spots. So yes, we have a surplus of parking. I mean, the only thing you could maybe do is eliminate some parking stalls in that area, but. I can bring it up to the client. Okay. Mary, would you want to make that a condition of approval? Is that what you're thinking, or? <sighs> when I'm sitting there trying to get out of that parking spot, I probably would have wished I had. Um, no, let's. I think the intent is to change the radius of the curb to allow easier access to the drive through which hopefully should allow That's what um, I'm an evacuation lane, in essence, around that. 
At this point, I'd like to open it up to public input. Anyone wishing to speak in regards to this application may do so at this time. <laughs> Seeing none, I will close the public input portion of this hearing. Isn't much. Is there anything you can do on that side with respect to striping? To well, I think the only thing that you can really do is make it even triple wide at that point. But by eliminating some parking stalls near where the you would allow you some evacuation around there. But um, I mean, the other thing would be you know maybe you make that employee parking and then no one. But or I don't know. Unfortunately, on a busy day, we're talking about pretty much all those parking spots on the west side, and obviously we can't do anything to to adjust that. I mean, it it's tight in there, and it's kind of the. I mean, we've cost been there when there's there. cars all the way out to the front of the building waiting to get to the drive-through. Which is a great thing. So mm -hmm. the last time I parked at McDonald's and walked over. I will say the drive-through is very popular, Taco Bell. So yeah, that's correct. Most of the. Um, most of the um, customers come through the drive-thru. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. I will say I don't think I've ever dined in. I've always tried to take it out. <laughs> plenty of parking at the mall. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, well, I guess we're going to make the issue a non-issue at this at this point. Um, if the app, your client, feels like there's a surplus of parking in that um, that traffic flow is an issue that the board would be uh, amenable I think it is to some sort of elimination of parking in order to create a better traffic flow on there so um, I think at this point you're looking to get your approvals and I think that on paper that is a two-way drive aisle which technically should allow for a car and a car to pass um, the practicality is I think that it's a um, a user in essence problem or driver problem not not keeping proper clearances to the you know the drive aisle but so you bring that information back to your client then we'll do All right <coughs> how many spots can you eliminate without uh, having to go to the zoning S board? I think six or because it, it's 24 point something that is required you at 31 so I'm think that's six stalls that you can eliminate I, I, I think the comment Maybe having employees use the ones that are closer to the <coughs> south side, you know, certainly could uh, eliminate some of the problem. Unfortunately, it's that whole west side that's a problem. But I think actually, after I thought about saying that, it's you want people not to park there rather than park there because then you could swing, drive, in essence, into the parking stalls in order to clear anyone that is you know, encroaching the drive aisle, the uh, basically the evacuation aisle. But does that make sense? I think at this point it, we're agreeing. It, do, it does make sense, and I, 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 I agree the only problem is people are going to use those spots no matter what. Well, you'd have to take them out and stripe them no parking. Yeah. And, and that parking lot gets busy enough I'm not sure they can really afford to do that but. yeah all right at this point um, I'm gonna review seeker this is an unlisted action so we've looked at the part two for part of the short environmental assessment form finding no or small impact to all of the 11 items contained within part two, um, which again includes the um, conflict with the adopted land use, a change in the intensity of the land, or most of these items that obviously, due to the minor nature of the renovation, would not be um, impacted. Part three, under our determination of significance, we find that the action is revi a revised site plan of the existing Taco Bell located at 1599 East Ridge Road, which is an unlisted action. Project calls for a small addition to the existing building facade and signage enhancements and a modification of the existing drive through aisle to reduce the length of concrete curbing separating the drive through lane from the adjacent parking area on site. The proposed site and building modifications will not have any adverse imp impacts on traffic, community character, or environmental conditions on this previously developed parcel. 
with that being said um, would someone like to make a motion uh, yeah mr chairman uh, uh, with respect to pb 1511-2 uh with respect to seeker uh, i move that this is an unlisted action negative declaration do i have a second second Thank you, Mary. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Seeing none, motion carries. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move approval of PB 1511 2 upon the matter of request by APD Engineering and Architecture acting as agent for Hospitality Syracuse and Taco Bell for a vice site plan approval to construct a plus or minus 303 square foot addition, modify sidewalk, drive through aisle and site related improvements on premises 1599 <coughs> East Ridge Road in a manufacturing district. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Thank you for investing in Ronnie Thank you very much. Thank you. Next item of the agenda is case number ZB1511-3. Upon the matter of request by Landtech, <coughs> acting as agent for Salvatore Sal Staltieri for preliminary final site plan approval and steep slope environmental protection overlay district EPOD permit to construct a 2,950 square foot single family dwelling with attached garage on premises 1791 Titus Avenue in an R1 residential district. Thank you. Uh, good evening, I'm John Sharaba with Landtech, representing Sal Salateri regarding this application. And the Salatari family is excited about moving from uh, Clarkson uh, into Arundacoit to construct this new home. As the public uh, notice stated, this is a single family home. Uh, this is a rather large lot. It's 5.6 acres in size. Uh, Mr. Salatari also owns another approximately five acre piece uh, that's south of this that has an existing home on Brown Road. Um, the proposed home will have access to public sanitary sewer and water at Titus Avenue. We have a 20 inch water main that runs along Titus Avenue and a sanitary sewer that runs there as well. Uh, access to the proposed home site will be through Whipple Lane. There is a, an existing opening um, along Whipple Lane that was reserved, a 50 foot wide strip for a future street. So the planners a long time ago, I believe 1959, left that opening uh, for future development. And usually I'm out here on a five acre site, probably wanting to put 10 homes in here. So I think we're fortunate uh, that it's only one house uh, with a single 14 foot wide driveway uh, to be uh, placed here. That's really the, the, the project. It's a, it's a large home. Um, we're proposing a walkout basement. Um, we're we're um, utilizing the grade uh, as, the, uh, as we've also applied for an EPOD permit for steep slopes. So this is a generally a, a, a steep property uh, on both sides. Our driveway kind of runs along the ridge to a flat area where the home site's going to be. Other than that, uh, the, the site is encumbered with steep slopes um, both to the west and to the east. So it's set up perfectly for this one home. Um, the plan that we provided shows the site is well graded, uh, safe access, and we avoided a lot of those slopes. So we're not disturbing a lot of the grading out there. We're not proposing a lot of cuts. Um, again, I said the walkout basement. We're taking advantage of the steep slopes, so we're, we're not fighting grade there. The site is well drained. And generally, 
all I have to, to say about the project. I do have comments from LaBella and the Conservation Board. I can go over those with you. Yes, one please. By one. Sure. Uh, so we have comments from uh, LaBella. They're dated November 9th um, from Mr. Shafron. And comment number one, um, that the plan now reflects uh, the disturbance on the plan. So we've added notes to the EPOD plan, which is sheet number two. Uh, so those now reflect this, the amount of disturbance. Uh, on the site plan, he asked us to add the roof leaders, which are four-inch pipe. We've shown where those roof leaders go, and they discharge. Those are on sheet two as well, um, on the garage to the east and on the house to the south. Um, the sewer lateral now is, uh, the clean-out is provided at the right-of-way of Titus Avenue. That's been added to the plan. Uh, Mr. Shafron asked about the driveway entrance on Whipple Drive, Whipple Lane. Um, they asked if we can move that a little further north because the radius of our driveway was encumbering the neighbor's property. So we were able to move that since we had 50 feet in there. Uh, so we accomplished that as well. <coughs> also uh, associated with the driveway, um, the town engineer, there were some low areas, asked if we can add some culverts that we could better drain the, the driveway and the site. So we, we added two new culverts along that. We labeled the wooded areas, and those areas were shown on the plan. Um, before, we were trying to uh, discharge directly into a manhole, but based on future research and working with the DPW, there are some existing laterals, so we're going to tie into those laterals with our sanitary sewer. Uh, the town engineer asked us if we can steepen our slopes, which are kind of a unique question usually in Runicoid. So we're, instead of a one-on-five slope, town code allows us a one-on-three. Uh, so we, we tightened those slopes up, which further diminished the amount of grading we needed along the house, so we were able to accomplish that. We also added note nine um, regarding our seating and stabilization notes on our EPOD plan. And we also labeled the driveway width on the plans. Uh, the town engineer asked us more, de uh, add some additional details and notes. So we showed some stockpiles for our, for our topsoil. Those are noted on sheet two. Note number five has also been revised. And that really is most of uh, the town engineer's comments. So. We had no problem with uh, the town engineer's comments. I think we addressed them all. Review just came today. Okay. Yep. Uh, the other comments we received were from the conservation board, <clears throat> and uh, I kind of alluded to you know pro property running quite 5.6 acres. Usually, I would be in front of you presenting at least five houses on this site. I think this is a very green project. Uh, we're we're managing the slopes. We're not cutting a lot, uh, but I'll go through there. Um, they're, they asked us that the uh, that the property, as I said, is encumbered by a, an EPOD for steep slopes, but they wanted to add a wood lot. It is heavily wooded site, um, but it's not listed on the town maps, and my client does not want to encumber the property with any more definition of wood lot. And uh, so we could talk about that, but I know that the town's practice now is to manage the wood lots by what's noted on the town record map, so I'm hoping that we can uh, agree with that. Um, we also wanted to, we've added orange construction fence on sheet two to delineate the limits of disturbance around the house. We've also added additional EPOD notes uh, on sheet two, specifying um, the handling of soils and this construction sequence added in note five on sheet three as well. Uh, the grading plan was revised to minimize um, disturbance, as I said before, and that's basically all of uh, the Conservation Board's comments. Uh, Carrie just handed me uh, Monroe County DRC comments. I can just take a quick look here. I don't expect to see any showstoppers. Go ahead. Just nothing on there. Nothing on there? <laughs> yeah. I'll take There's the boiler's comments. <laughs> so, yeah. So I think we've addressed all the town engineer comments, conservation board's comments, probably to the best of our ability, and I'm willing to take questions from you. Is there any plans to subdivide the parcel further in the future? No. Jake, questions? Um, Mr. Chairman, this might be for you or for the town, the town attorney. Um, if, if uh, with respect to Woodlot, that wouldn't be up to this board anyway. It, it would be, it would. I assume that would be a, an action that would require a public hearing in front of the town board, and they would make the decision whether to do that. Is that correct? No, the the creation and administration of the EPOD maps is actually with the, it's at a town staff level with the planning and zoning department, okay, but th so this board does not have the authority to create or impose a woodlot. Okay. 
a woodlot district designation. Be, so that's there's there's no action for this right. board to take regarding okay. that comment. Uh, the only other thing I uh, walk on the site, it, it it's surprising that while it is very hilly in there, it's also very flat in the areas that you're looking to to build. So it really doesn't look like there's going to be much uh, um, encumbered, other than the fact that you've got to level out as much as possible as much as you as possible the driveway to make it uh, drivable but I don't have any problem at all with this I'm all set rich no uh, no easements needed uh, it's all completely on the owner's property it's on the owner's property the one uh, thing that, that, that we could speak to a little bit is the access the 50-foot access to Whipple Lane is is a uh, public right-of-way uh, so we've talked to Pat Meredith about that process, and I think part of the approvals would be us either showing a formal easement from the town of Ronicoy or my client would like to purchase that portion. So either way, it'll work out. Um, it'll be addressed prior to the chairman's signature. Okay. Uh, other than that, I think it's a, a good use of the property and a good use of the, the available land. Ray? I couldn't agree more with Mr. Palukas, but Mr. Excuse me, could you address the conservation board suggest the applicant consider a permeable driveway and or modified grading plan to minimize the need of de-icing materials? And what type of icing de-icing materials are you recommending? Well, we're proposing that we don't really have any slopes, so we're not proposing any. It's just normal driveway maintenance that you and I would have. Um, so we're not proposing any salting or anything on this area. Uh, porous pavement or doing a, a, a paver driveway is a little bit cost prohibitive. Um, but I think we, you know, managed it with limited disturbance. Again, we're not, if you look at the, uh, we could go up to 25% lot disturbance. We're less than 2% with this, with this plan. So. No, I just wanted you to address the chance so that yeah. it was. Yeah. I understand. Public record. That's yep. all. Thank <laughs> you. I'm in favor. Of, I, th I think this is great. Bernie? No comments. I'm in favor of it. Thank Mary? I'm in favor of it. It's nice to see actually a second lot on Titus Avenue be developed at yeah. At this point, I'd like to open it up to public input. Anyone wishing to speak in regards to this application may do so at this time. Good evening, board members. Ron Rigby, 38 Glen Hollow. I appreciate the fact that the developer is retaining this area as an R1 versus an R7. We've gone down that road before. Um, Oh, were you part of that? <laughs> to say the least. Thank you for maintaining the integrity of our neighborhood. Uh, my other concern, I've noticed that the perimeter of the parcel is, I would say, littered with no trespassing and posted signs. No trespassing, I understand, means stay the hell out of there. Does posting mean that there's hunting going on at that, at that parcel? Can anybody answer that question? Not so much with a shotgun, but there is bow hunting allowed in around the quite. I don't know, is, it a, is it a bait and shoot part site or former? I mean, I don't. I don't believe that it is. Um, so there's only specified. There's a certain number of specified um, parcels where the bow hunting program that's being regulated that it's posted. The, it's not one of them, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. So the, yeah, this is not. This would, uh, to my knowledge, and I can ch double check the mapping that we maintain. Um, I don't believe. It just might be somebody protecting and making sure that no one thinks they can go in there because it is a large mm -hmm. wooded lot. They might just be taking okay. extra precaution. Can I contact you directly about that you sure for can. a final decision? Well, yeah. you want to hunt there? Oh, no. <laughs> those, are, those are all my pets out there, those big guys. <laughs> well, I think posting allows no hunting, so are, but, uh, except for them by the owner, but I can't imagine that they're going to hunt on their own property. No. Well, it seems like there's enough area where they, they could. Uh, the allow it, uh, the lighter footage to participate with a bow hunt, I'm sure is is more than sufficient in that area. If, that if you want to give me a call, I can review the map um, okay. first thing tomorrow and and have that information confirmed for you. But I don't recall that the that that parcel anything along Titus Avenue was included as a as an eligible location. Okay. Okay. Um, is the dwelling that's at the at the corner of Brown Road? Does that have anything to do with that parcel? There's an existing dwelling. It's, I believe that the owner bought both parcels, but they're separate parcels is what I recollect. But um, 
John can address. Okay, all so one is the, the new building parcel, and the other one is the old parcel that has the existing dwelling on it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in regards to this application may do so at this time. Seeing none, close the public input portion. John, if you'd like to readdress the board. Um, yeah, sorry, I can't help you with the hunting situation, so I don't know if he's <laughs> hunting out there. Um, but uh, you are correct, Mr. Chairman, that it is two parcels. Uh, the house on Brown Road is on a separate parcel and uh, will remain that way right now. <clears throat> At this point, I think it's time to discuss Seeker with regards to this application. And this is an unlisted action as well. <clears throat> as far as the Part 2 impact assessment, we find that there's no or small impact in the 11 matters in regards to the, um, that portion of the application. <clears throat> Just making sure I have the right one. Uh, regarding Part 3, the determination of significance, uh, the proposed action is the construction of a single-family home on 5.6 acres plus or minus parcel. It's partially encumbered by a steep slope EPOD. This is an unlisted action. The single-family home is in keeping with the character of the surrounding area and will not impact traffic or demand for other community services. The proposed building and site design, which reflects modifications based on the town engineer's review and comments, will minimize potential adverse impacts to the site's natural features. Someone like to make a motion? I, I can do this. Um, with respect to PB 1511 3, in regards to Seeker, it would be an unlisted action, negative declaration. Thank you, Bernie. Second. I just have one question. Is this something the fire marshal would have already looked at, or only if concerns were raised would they be inv would he be involved at this point? He it, he has reviewed it. Yes. Okay, and and no comments or concerns. No, sir. Okay, thank you. I do think the building is fairly close to Titus, so I think from that as a benefit rather than being remote in the middle of the parcel. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Motion carries. So um, we are looking Chairman, for, with respect to PB 1511-4, oh, excuse me, 1-3, matter request by Land Tech, acting as agent for Salvatore uh, Stel Stelteri, for a preliminary final site plan approval and steep slope environmental protection overlay district permit to construct a 2950 square foot single family dwelling with attached garage on premises 1791 Titus Avenue, R1 residential district. I move approval. Second. Are we are we looking for the easement from the town? From no, no, no. no. Okay, they're accessing the person through a public right away. So okay, all right. Do we have a second? Second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Seeing none, motion carries. Uh, tell your client, thank you for investing in Rondi Point. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is case number PB11-4. Upon the matter of request by Susan Oshman for preliminary final site plan and signage approval to operate a boat related business with site related improvements on premises tax ID 047.18-2-3.2 located south of 100 Joy Lane in an RH River Harbor district. Hi, I'm Susan Ashman. Um, I'm here seeking approval, site approval for my shop to be at Voyager Marina. Can you tell us a little bit about your project? Pardon? Can you tell us a little bit about your project? Yeah, um, I have a shop that's located there, um, approximately 14 by 70, somewhere through there, 72. Um, we're a canvas and a marine vinyl upholstery shop. Um, we do boat detailing. Um, we have 
Um, right now I have two full-time employees, one part-time, um, and we're looking to be based at a marina. Um, I'm looking for the approvals for um, the, the shop to be located there and signage on the shop. <clears throat> and so you're moving a uh, pre-manufactured building on site? Yes, it's there already. It's there How already will that be permanently installed on site? Will it be left on cribbing? It, um, well, it has wheels, um, but we have it blocked. Um, you use these things called ABS. Um, they're big square. They're like 18 inches by 18 inches, and you put cinder blocks on top to level it. And then you skirt it. Will the wheels be left on the trailer or you take them off? I'd leave them on as far as I know. Are you going to be adding a skirt or anything? Yes. What about um, accessibility? Um, as far as handicap? A deck or a stairs? Or we have stairs now on the property. We have stairs going up to the front door. Um, and then we're looking um, to do either a handicap ramp or a lift. Okay. Mm-hmm. Can you describe the skirting that you're going to be putting up? Um, we're either going to go with a regular, um, what's referred to as a mobile home skirting, um, or we're going to do it <coughs> out of wood, which would be like a pressure-treated one by sixes around it to add to the character a little bit better than, um, you know, just the regular aluminum skirting. And tell us a little bit about the bathroom and parking situation. Sure. The bathroom situation, there's no, um, we have no facilities in the, in the shop itself. We would be u utilizing um, the public restrooms at Voyager Marina, which are directly across the parking lot. And you have no hand washing or anything that you're going to provide within the? With inside? No, there is no water or sewer or anything hooked up to it. Okay. And I'm sorry, did you say, what about parking? Parking? Um, we have a quite a big area for parking. Um, I gave Carrie the map to that. Did you should have received? Yeah, it. I know, but I wanted her to address. Okay. <laughs> I have it. I'm just trying to. <laughs> it's hard to say, like how many. If you're looking for like how many spaces. But, or but anything. I, the point is that your parking is going to be on site, but not on on the premises. You're looking to use. Oh, we're allowed to use it. Um, yeah, we're allowed to use it at Voyagers. Right. marina anywhere on the property but we also have quite a an area um i think in the map that was provided it tells you the uh, square footage and lastly i was looking at the update it seems like you've eliminated the freestanding sign i did okay so the only signage that you're looking to have is the signage that's on the on your on your premises. Yeah, I found building. out today that I couldn't have the sign that I wanted at the road. So we're only going to go with the one on the shop itself. And at some point, I'd like to do maybe something on top of um, the shop, kind of the same way that Voyagers has it now. It's kind of it's kind of if I can't have one at the road. Will you have a sign uh, up front? by where Shumway's lighthouse is. I think there's a number of signs up there. I for saw the that, and I'm not sure who I have to ask permission for that sign, but it would be great to be added to that uh -huh. so my customers can find out where we are. Right. Yeah. At this point, I'd like to open it up to questions and comments from the board. Uh, Jay? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Ms. Uh, Oshman? Mm -hmm. um, this this proper this um, project looks like it's uh, good use for this particular parcel. Um, it's certainly um, it's nautical. It's um, it's it's it'll be a good location for you. Um, concern I have is that we don't really have any plans for what you're going to do to the trailer or anything else, mm -hmm. except for what we're talking about right here. Um, if I look at the trailer that's there now, mm -hmm. and I, I look at the trailer, uh, the Navy Point one that's right across the way, there's a big difference in the 
uh, I guess you call an aesthetics of Correct. the two. I understand that your business has nothing to do with the aesthetics of your manufacturing facility, which is the trailer. Mm -hmm. But that area down here is um, with with uh, some proposed some proposed um, improvements in the area, and also just the the idea of putting something down here like this. I see. I need to see what the plans are actually going to be, mm -hmm. rather than I might go with this and I might go with that. I don't. I understand that you don't have incentive to make it any nicer than it is now, but that's really what our that's what we're here for to make sure that what we what goes forward is something that is not only efficient with with, with respect to being you know something that would actually fit in the area, which it would the business would but the the facilities themselves need an upgrade um, and I need to see plans for what you're going to do for, with respect to an upgrade so okay um, that's all fair questions um, you did see the pictures right well it wasn't a question it was a statement <laughs> okay um, I provided quite large pictures to carry initially when I did this much larger than this this is an artist rendition of what it will look like we had received a kind of a, um, a work order stop to go forward with this project, so we stopped. So I had a company in Buffalo who's doing my branding for my company um, try to show the board what it will look like with a nautical awning, with our signage on the side, with our door that looks like a porthole, all of those things. Um, with black skirting down here now, with a black skirting change, all I asked the artist to do was to cover up the wheels. We didn't go forward with any further than that until I, I knew more what, what it was going to entail. You know, um, we definitely, and then this is the reverse side of it, which kind of faces under the bridge. Is that, I don't see that. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't recall seeing that. It was in the original packet. Was it? Yeah. Um, you can you can have mine. I have some more. So maybe you could just talk a little bit about the the um, aspects again. Just reiterate the aspects that you talked about there that would help it fit in with the zoning characteristics of the River Harbor District. Mm -hmm. So are, is your intention to use the black and white awning that you show on that? Um, it's actually supposed to. Blue. Maybe your pictures blue. are they're blue, yeah. um, and we're not a hundred percent on that blue. We want as nautical as possible, so we're leaning with a navy blue. But again, this is an artist rendition of it. They did it pretty quickly, so I could submit everything to but you quickly. So part of the improvements that you're going to do are add the sign, a porthole door, mm -hmm. and the awning, mm -hmm. and the skirting, and the skirting, and yep. the stairs, and a, probably and the, a ramp. Yep, in the ramp or and or the elevator. Right. I think you'll want to use a ramp, but. Why? Cost wise. Yeah. Oh, I, we actually had one um, donated to us. Oh. Okay. So for I, me, cost wise, that's better. <laughs> I guess it's always better. It's always oh, better, I, yeah. I saw these, and I mean, this is a start. This is certainly a start, and I, if I wasn't clear on that, then I'm sorry. I apologize. But if I look at the, it, this is still a trailer that um, it's. Two or three hundred yards that way. It's going to be. It's still the back side of the trailer now. It's got. It's still an old trailer, and it's got an awning on it. And if I would like to see something along the whole front of the, the, the covering up the whole front, like the like they have on uh, the the building right across the Navy point. Navy Point. Rich, um, just, just following up on what Jay said, um, I understand now that the, you mentioned the stop work. I mean, what's down there now is very unappealing. Um, oh, absolutely. And, to us and, too. and I'm glad to, to us hear, too. I yeah. mean, yeah, That's definitely. And I'm, I'm glad to hear you agree with that. Um, I, I think you have a couple of. I mean, there's trailers and there's trailers, mm -hmm. and you have a couple down there, Navy Point, and then there's one over. Uh, by Shumway where they sell the sailboats so you have a, a RCR, couple yeah. Yeah, ideas of 
what what can really look nice. Um, I, I will say that I, I don't know you personally, but I'm quite familiar with the work you do, your work ethic, the quality of your work from other boaters down there and projects you've done for them. I have, I have no doubt that um, your business will be successful from what I know about you and, and that it's a needed service. Thanks. I do share Jay's concern, though, mm -hmm. that this is a work trailer. I mean, that people you're going to go out and you're going to meet with boaters and you're going to meet on their boat and you're going to sell your products on the boat and, mm -hmm. and your services. There's not a lot of incentive for you to make the trailer appealing and, and something that's acceptable for us as the planning board. And this is really our only chance to make sure that it's an appealing and acceptable building for that location. Right. Um, so that, that's why we're being somewhat critical here. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I think you have the opportunity to take a look at some really nice looking trailers in the area, mm -hmm. and, and I'm glad to hear that you want to make yours look as nice. Um, I, the, the skirting here, obviously, we can't tell from the pictures what it's going to consist of. I don't have any problem with it being an administrative thing dealt with by the chairman. Um, if, if you wish, as far as approval of the ultimate appearance of the skirting, but obviously the skirting is something that has to be done. Oh, absolutely. Um, so, um, and, and I don't know if you want to consider, you know, I'm not real good at designing things. I don't know if you want to consider some shutters or something for maybe the front and back windows to right. make it more appealing. I wanted to stay away from shutters and things like that because it more, makes it more look like a residential dwelling. Um, I think that you'll find going forward, um, if we get approval, that um, we are, everyone who works for me is totally nautical boats. Um, we will have people showing up at our shop. We, where we work now is out of my residence. We can't have people showing up at my shop, okay? So this is another reason to go to have a property that they can now come to because then it becomes a retail space. Mm -hmm. Retail space has to show what Susie's Boutique is all about. And that's crisp lines. Everything is done correctly. Um, Pat works for me full time. Um, they are artists in their own way. So we're not going to let the trailer that we had halted our work on be anything less than what we would put in our quality of work, if that makes sense. It, it does, and those are all things that we really want to hear and right. we want to see. It, right, right. Um, and, 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 and I didn't mean to, to minimize um, your position about people coming to your shop. I understand right. that, but the, the sales part of your job is really going to be done away from your property right. and, and this is a work trailer mm -hmm. and then people will probably come and pick up things there for the most part but and, and and my my point is hearing you say these things and knowing that you're gonna do that and be a good neighbor and and do all of the things that you do in your regular business right. to make this building appealing right. is absolutely necessary okay and, and we need a plan that shows what you're gonna do oh. that's what that's what I'm and if I wasn't clear on that, I apologize, but I don't see a plan that does that at this point. Mm -hmm. And that's what I need. Ray? I really like your sign <laughs> to begin with. Let's start with that. Let's, Thank let's, you. Let's use some positives here. Um, regardless of what anybody says, this is a manufacturing facility. It's not a retail facility. You're not going to bring in a wide variety of customers you probably take swatch books and etc to different hey. boats because let's face it you're not going to bring a 50-foot yacht into this particular location you're going to be working hey. on site um, regrettably I think the rendering that you've given here especially as it relates to branding I like Thank you. I don't think it's obtuse I don't think it's out of character with the neighborhood at all um, and with the with the effort you put into this so far I can tell because you said you had to stop because of the stop order from right. the town mm -hmm. that I'm sure there's going to be subsequent refinements to make the business even better. <laughs> That's, yes, definitely. That being said, um, it's a manufacturing facility. I look at it, at least I hope to look at it like this, that it's the first step going forward. 
Right. In other words, let's start with a trailer. No matter what we do to a trailer, what's the old expression? Lipstick on a pig. It's, you know, <laughs> I think cetera. that is it. You know, I don't mean to put it that way. But, no. You know, right. There's only so much you're going to be able to do with a trailer. Right. But it could be a prelude to brick oh, and mortar. Absolutely. Down the road. Absolutely. Should the business succeed, and sincerely hope it does. So for you to put an immense amount of dollars into something beyond what I'm seeing here, which is attractive, by the way, Thank you. as it relates to the, the site in the area, um, would preclude you growth-wise down the road to go to that perhaps brick-and-mortar location where you can bring in people and have retail as well as uh, manufacturing in one facility. So right. as far as I'm concerned, this, this works for me. This Thank really. you. The back door is for what? Pardon? It seems like there's a front door and a back door, a double door out the back. Well, we there was a door there anyways, and I uh, would assume that you needed uh, entrance, uh, uh, a separate way out. Um, but the double doors in the back would be to bring in larger, like, vinyl seats out of a boat, things that you might not fit through the front door. Okay. <clears throat> Bernie? I'm torn on this one. So I agree with everything that Jay said and Rich said. I also agree with everything that Ray said. And I really like all the things that you say you're going to do in the way you run your business. Mm -hmm. But what's really lacking is, and what's lacking is, is what exactly is that plan that we can put with this? If right. we're going to approve this, what are the things that she's going to guarantee she's going mm -hmm. to do? We don't have that in front of us to, in order to move forward so what I feel is lacking is you know the skirt this the mm -hmm. aesthetics you don't really have it listed that you're gonna do it so if we right. approve this and you get very busy it could look like this for a while so right. I don't I'm concerned. That's a, that's a fair concern that's that's what I'm concerned about and, right right and all I can good if you're busy pardon it's good if you're busy but oh, it's, yeah. also, it's also <laughs> bad if, if it's gonna remain to look like that like it right. is currently yeah. Those are my Before I, Mary's comments, Ashley, do you have the, the River Harbor District open? What does it say about the aesthetics of the? Yeah. What What do you mean? There's stipulations within the River Harbor District about um, design guidelines, aren't there? I thought it was quite uh. open. It's permitted. Am I? Carrie, am I incorrect in remembering that the River Harbor District has some, that it needs to meet a nautical theme? Yeah. It talks about the design guidelines pursuant to this chapter. Um, it, does, it talks more about the uses. Isn't there a special appendice for the River Harbor District that for design guidelines? Oh, if it's because uh, yeah, we've gone through this before with the uh, um, storage facility, I believe, in the River Harbor District. Well, while they're looking up, we'll go back to Mary. <laughs> I have to say that I fully agree with the rest of my board members that we need a plan. At the workshop, I asked you. You said you got at this trailer, and you're going to use propane heat. Mm -hmm. You do know that it's very cold in a trailer, and down in that river, it's going to be very, very cold. Absolutely. Um, Carrie, is Fire Marshal going to be checking this out? Um, She's going to be using propane. Um, yeah. So anything pending this, if the board were to approve the site plan. The applicant would need to come before the building department to obtain all any and all necessary building and or fire marshal permits that may be required. Um, and so that would be the next step. Yeah. Th this is the first step. Um, most trailers, they're well insulated and everything, and they also have, it's not one big open area, which is going to be harder to keep warm. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel that the fire marshal is going to have to be a big help to you I'm making sure that your heating is set right in there. I think you're going to need more than one. Uh, so. Well, it's not propane. It's it's a propane furnace. 
it's a propane furnace that you'd put in a home. There's duct work. There's duct work throughout the whole thing. Okay. Um, this isn't like a kerosene heater or something that you'd use in your garage. Okay. Well, you'd mentioned at the workshop you're going to put a heater in, so. A heater, a furnace. Um, okay. Propane furnace, brand new. It's in the box inside the trailer. <laughs> okay, and that tells me then the fire marshal will be coming because of the absolutely. propane tank. So. Yep, absolutely. Okay, I was just concerned about the safety. Yep, it's my I understand. Job. Yep, <laughs> it's okay. I'm good. There are some there are some uh, design guidelines for this area. Do you want me to provide sure. description? Um, projects constructed within the River Harbor District shall reflect a maritime theme utilizing site design elements common to maritime waterfront areas, um, such as landscape pedestrian walkways that provide access to and along the riverfront, which here doesn't apply, it's not direct riverfront, parking areas separated from the riverfront by buildings. Most of these tend to be focused on very close to the, or close to the waterfront. Um, distinct carved wood signs and wrought iron accents along pedestrian water walkways. Um, building orientation and placement to maximize water views. Distinctive outdoor lighting consistent with the area's theme. Um, on the subject of buildings and structures constructed within the district should reflect a maritime theme utilizing architectural design elements materials, details, and colors common to maritime waterfront areas. And then goes on to say such as gable style pitch roofs, projected eaves, sheltered entries, small individual buildings with clap clabbered or wood shingling, shingled siding, shutters beside windows, divided light windows, flower boxes, paint color schemes with trim accents, uh, cupolas, weather vanes, etc. So the, there are some suggestions as, as far as the kind of elements that might be included. So even though your building is a pre-manufactured building placed on site, um, you need to kind of fold in a few of those type of details or oh, looks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that's some, one of the things that we need to see. And I, I think what we're saying is that um, what we've seen so far is maybe not quite enough. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But at this point, um, we'll open it up to public input and see what the public has to say. Sure. Right. At this point, I'd like to open it up to public input. Anyone wishing to speak in regards to this application may do so at this time. I'm in the front row, so I'll go, go right first. <laughs> My name is Doug Burgess. I live at Scotch Lane here in the town. I've been here since 1972. I've owned boats since about 1990. And uh, for several years, I was at the Newport Marina. The cap has owned it. As I remember that operation, there was a trailer on site that was occupied as kind of an office and uh, management locale for the uh, boat boating operation. And uh, I don't know the history behind uh, permits or anything else, but I remember a trailer in operation there <coughs> until it's... Uh, closure. <clears throat> I uh, moved over to uh, Mr. Gilbert's operation quite a few years ago and that's the property where this site is and uh, I'm now over at the Gibbs Marina on the river and I'm familiar with Susan and uh, I know that she has done very satisfactory and good work down in the, amongst the boaters on the, here in the town and over in that locale. And uh, I'm in favor of her operation. I can see myself getting some canvas done soon, and I'd like the ability to go over and go into one of the docks and have her uh, measure up and do the work for me. And uh, I'm also, uh, a few weeks ago, I had the opportunity to go down to the property there at uh, Voyager, and uh, I don't need glasses yet, but I got all the way into the boat storage area and didn't even see this trailer. So I had to ask directions from one of the employees, where is the, where is the boutique trailer going to be? And they directed me back, but what I'm trying to get at is it's not something that's very obvious from the casual observer, either going over the bridges or even going down into the marina. So uh, uh, I think on one side of it, at one point, there was a boat storage uh, lot locked up that Mr. Gilbert used for a lot of his is uh, either boats for sale or boats that were not uh, currently in use. And I, I do think that the, uh, uh, the use of the, uh, this particular uh, 
trailer down there is ideal for uh, the site. There was a there was an operation nearby called Canvas Mam that was on the Shumway location a few years back. It was in the property that is now their uh, Schooner's restaurant operation, and they're they're gone. I think uh, Susan is one of the uh, the only fabricators down there that is uh, going to be on site and willing to tackle this kind of an operation. So I'm very much in favor of it, and I do think that the board should keep in mind that uh, it's not a thoroughfare down there. This is boaters doing boat business, either going to and from their seasonal docks or going over to the ship store at Schooners or Shumways. It's, it's not a casual way, wayfare at all. So uh, if you get into the uh, very, very scrupulous uh, consideration of the aesthetics, all you got to do is look around that area, and you're talking about skirts on a trailer, but if you look 50 yards away, you've got boats that are probably 40 or 50 years old that are just sitting, uh, going to seed. So I'm, what I'm getting at is we're not dealing with uh, I-Square or Titus Avenue or St. Paul Boulevard. That's all I've got. Thank you. Hello, my name is Vicki Thayer. I'm a resident of Irondequoit. I'm in support of this project. I think it's a good location and it's the right kind of business for that location. Um, I'm also a boater and have a lot of friends that are boaters and I do know Sue personally, but I do support this kind of business for that location and I know that she'll do a nice job and complete the aesthetics outside. Um, I would like to see a sign that's more visible and even possibly on the roof, as she mentioned, because there's a lot of traffic there that won't probably know that she's around unless they see some signs. Um, but I do know uh, a lot of boaters that use her work or would benefit from her being in this area. So I'd like to, you to consider that. Thank you. Thank Ms. you. Ms. Thayer? Yes. May I have your address for the record, please? Sure. 474 Wimbledon Road. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Thanks for the chance to speak tonight. Uh, my name is Daryl Hunt. Uh, I'm from Pittsford, but uh, I'm the manager and broker at Navy Point Marine and uh, right across the the driveway from where the the uh, property under discussion is is located. Um, when I first came in and saw the trailer park there, I thought, "There goes the neighborhood," you know. <laughs> <clears throat> but shortly after that, uh, Susan actually came over to my office, and uh, within about 10 or 15 minutes, I was uh, very excited. One to realize who it was that put the trailer there because Susan's work and reputation preceded her. Uh, I've sent clients of mine to her for, for some of the marine services she provides and she has a very good reputation for that. I'm not hearing any debate over that so I won't belabor that point. Um, but she was very excited and, and exuded enthusiasm about her plans for doing just what you're concerned about, uh, making that trailer look like a first-class retail outlet. And I understand the arguments about retail versus manufacturing. Certainly it's going to be both, but uh, anybody in the business that I'm in or she's in has to present a first-class facade to any type of business. People will be bringing in canvas um, for repairs on a regular basis. Um, I told her I wanted to be her first customer because I have some canvas myself. Um, but as somebody has mentioned, it is possible to take a, a, a structure of that type and make it look very suitable for that environment uh, as we did. And I take pride in, in the upkeep of our building uh, for Navy Point Yacht Sales. I see no reason why she couldn't or wouldn't uh, transform the current structure to look very much like that in, in a very short period of time. And I understand 
you know, the very rational um, requests for a plan, I think she could come up with that very quickly. Uh, she probably felt like the artist rendering would be sufficient. But I have no doubt that if, if there hadn't been a hold place on her work, uh, that location would, and I'm not criticizing that hold by any means, uh, but she was so excited about getting the work done. I think right now, over the past few weeks, she probably would have had the majority of that uh, building looking much more suitable for that location. Uh, the other thing I wanted to just reiterate was the need for these services. Uh, we've had two businesses shut down. I think the nearest canvas, marine canvas business that caters to sailboats as well as power boats, uh, maybe as far away as Williamson or Sotus. You know, it's just not convenient. It's very um, exciting to me to be able to walk across the street or, or walk my customer across the street and say, here's somebody that can design your canvas for a boat that I'm selling. So, uh, yeah, I hope that this will be approved and I look forward to many years of uh, working closely with Susan and building her business. Thank you. I'm David DiVincenzo. I live on uh, 39 Ladder Road. Uh, I am part of the boating community, and um, I didn't realize when I came that um, there was as many people excited uh, enough to uh, come down tonight and uh, comment on the experiences that they've had with Susan and her operation. Um, I had a small job done earlier in the year and um, was was very impressed um, with, with the way she handled it, uh, and since I've contracted with her to do some extensive work uh, for me uh, and will continue to recommend her to uh, uh, anyone who will listen. Uh, as part of the boating community, um, I just wanted to, to come down because it is something that is needed and it's something that um, uh, I, I think we'd be very lucky to work with a person of Susan's caliber uh, uh, down here and um, although I am on the other side of the bridge, uh, I will say that I um, I'm glad to have, or hopefully have, uh, another reason to come over, uh, as I do, to support uh, some of the locally owned uh, businesses. And that's really all I need to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name's Pat Parker. I live at 68 Walnut Park. And I just wanted to speak from like the resident point of view because I live in Aronacoit and I like working in Aronacoit too because it's a quick drive. <laughs> um, it's it's a, such an exciting thing to be a part of a growing business that has such enthusiasm and such a good future in Aronacoit. I just I can't even explain to you where I came from previously in my work environment to working for Susan. It's, she's just lightness. Um, and she will get things done. And that is so refreshing. Um, I think the, the success of her business should not be judged by previous businesses not success in that area. It's, it's ripe for picking. People want that business there. And we draw customers from South Point, from you know other marinas, but we chose Voyager because it's in Aronacoy, and that was where we wanted to be. Um, I guess that's really the the big point. I I live in Aronacoy, and I want to support Aronacoy, and I think that will be this will be a really good thing. Anyone else like to speak in regards to this application? Seeing none, we'll close the public input portion. I think um, 
the issue resolves down to aesthetics. Um, I think that everyone on the board is supportive of the use. Um, I think we've gotten over the fact that it's a pre-manufactured building. Um, I think it's coming down to some of the building embellishments. Um, you know, to me, um, personally, I think it could go a little further, but, you know, between her signage, which has an anchor, and the blue and white color scheme, which kind of says it's nautical, um, would I like to see more, perhaps? Um, is it adequate? You know, perhaps also, I guess that's, you know, where it's down to, to call. me. If I, if I could just interject and, and, and maybe explain to the applicant and some of the people here, um, you know, I, I think the comments were all very valuable, and I think it's it's obvious from what you've heard from up here and from what you've heard out there that, you know, it, it's it's a great project, it's a great idea, it's a needed service. Um, the concerns is this is our only chance to make sure it's done right, and and I and I fully understand where you're coming from and, and you want us to trust that you're going to do it right because that's the way you do things and that's how the business is going to be successful at the same time i mean there may or may not be a multi-million dollar project going on immediately adjacent to there somewhere down the road um we're used to people coming in front of us with plans that say the top 14 inches are going to be canvas. They're going to be this color blue canvas, and here's the canvas. And it, it, the skirt is going to be made of this material, and we've got very detailed plans. And, and as a result, we're uncomfortable, or at least I'm uncomfortable. I can't speak for everybody else. It's hard to go forward with, with the idea that I'm going to do it because I want it to be nice and it's going to look nice without some guarantees that we can go back later on and the town can say you said you were going to do this and you didn't put the skirt in and you have to do it now and that's the predicament we're in so i i, I go through this just to kind of let you know where we're coming from not that we're not in, I, i'm not it's, it's not that i'm not in favor of the project or what you do it's just we need to be able to be sure that what is promised gets done in accordance with a plan I think what they're asking for is preliminary and final site plan and signage approval. Um, I mean, I don't think it's a far stretch to get preliminary if that's something that the board wants to consider, and then <coughs> you can ask for um, further documentation on the, the building aesthetics and materials. Um, I don't know if preliminary gets them any further ahead, whether I, that helps them. I don't them. know what that gives them, but if, they, if you feel better about it, that would be fine with me. The th um, one thing I'm concerned about with this is not just the front I'm, I'm concerned about the back too I understand that it's not well traveled back there but as as Rich said that there's 200 yards from there or a few hundred yards from there in a few years there's a potential of having um, uh, condos or, or relatively expensive condos in there and the back of the trailer isn't isn't anything to look at either and I don't know if it's better to have uh, figure out a way to put in some uh, uh, what's the right <coughs> um, either fix it up or block it off uh, to to make it so that you can't see it a fence I don't know if it needs to be a fence just a you know a row of trees or something <coughs> landscape landscape buffer L landscape buffer would be I guess a good way to put it yeah I'm not sure she has the ability to do that because right. it's not her property it's not her property but you know to, to add so, to I'm so sorry, so yeah so I'm um, looking at it it's I you know the the skirt on the top and the or skirt on the bottom and the and the along the top is fine but the middle of the building if I look at what Navy Point did with there you you, you almost don't know that's a pre-manufactured building and and having some kind of uh, uh, new covering along the uh, you know along the from between the top and the bottom as well as what I'd be looking for something like that Just Preliminary approval get them the ability to move forward on any improvements, or it's just no. basically in, oh, still a hold. We and like I said, I'm I'm all in favor of this project. I think it's a great use. Uh, I think it's going to be successful because you've been successful already, and I think everything about that is fine. I just um, and somebody mentioned I Square, and we had the same. There was the the owner of I Square uh, had some concerns that we were we were doing. We weren't 
we weren't allowing them to do things on uh, their say so as well so we we did the same thing even though they were spending lots of money we needed to have plans in place before we go forward with that as well so this is our responsibility as a, as a board so I like to say that when I go shopping if I go to a store and the store looks like crap outside I don't want to go inside from everything I've heard here tonight I have no doubt that you're going to make that place look spiffy and just the word boutique is going to draw people so I'm ready to go with what the plans are here I guess if I might add something to this in, in it I concur with you Mary um, during our workshop and during this conversation we keep referencing a particular development that may or may not happen in the effect of this business on this particular development that might have upscale condos well that program is not in place at this juncture and to preclude somebody to go forward with their own business with the if come of somebody else's potential project just does not seem to make a lot of sense I think you've hit the uh, nautical theme of the trailer or manufacturing facility let's call it that at this juncture certainly you will have at times retail customers within the facility to show them what you can do how many sewing machines or however you do it I don't even know forgive me um, but we shouldn't preclude that um, whatever you do down there at least in my opinion at this juncture is an improvement with that property um, the skirting certainly we'd like to see some if, if some colors the trailer on a property like that it's not making it any better it's, it's, it's not making it any worse either I, I don't know I don't um, know in my opinion it won't make it any worse, especially the way it, we've I, seen I, the I rendering it, it doesn't so. look that great right now and I know that there's going to be there's plans in place to do stuff but I, I'd like to see what the plans are that's that's my only that's the only thing that's holding me up and it's I mean that's where I am and it's it when I say I, I, I would whether they whether they, they have the condos there or not it doesn't matter it's that you, you want that part of our job is to make sure that the that you know things that go in are aesthetically you know aren't aesthetic are aesthetically pleasing well regardless of our wishes um, the zoning district is written such that there are design and aesthetic concerns for the River Harbor district which which right now the board is somewhat ambivalent on the fact that it meets and is compliant with those regulations. So some of us feel that it's kind of okay. Some of us feel that they could do more. So I don't think, I don't know that there's a quorum that says that it's approvable at this point. Am I correct? I mean, you, I think, say yes. I'm kind of halfway between your, want to see a little more, Mary? It's fine if you want to. It's Bernie. I want to see a little bit more, but if I remember, and I'm thinking back to I Square, isn't there a checklist that they're supposed to fill out prior to coming? There is. And I don't think I've seen that for this. And I would probably agree, but at any rate, the application is before us. Um. <clears throat> I mean, I think the best thing for, for me, the best thing to do would be leave it open, and if you can come back with plans next month, we can, you know, in two weeks would be in, in two weeks. We can, if you can come back with plans, then. Can I speak? I you yeah, you, know, you, yeah, you can actually, oh, yeah. you're supposed to be standing there. <laughs> All right. Um, the, the trailer, the shop, the fabrication spot um, got put at Voyagers, just so you have background, was put at Voyagers, and I, as a layman, did not know that I had to go through town approval. We had everything, the paint is bought. For the whole thing to be painted the roof we got to the roof before we knew that we couldn't do anything more you have to seal them we sealed it um again we bought the paint for the exterior so you're we repainting bought. the exterior to a different color yeah it's in uh it's gray and blue right now it's i think brown and white <clears throat> um the the skirting around it to be honest with you i haven't even thought about the skirting at the bottom other than I know that I would place it there because I was looking for site approval and I didn't know 
that it's I'm I'm a tenant. I'm not the landlord, so I didn't really know bringing my my shop there what I had to do until I got notification through so Voyagers. To clarify. It sounds like your proposal is cuz is this indicating that the the building has been painted gray? It it is partially painted. We got halted. <clears throat> It's, um, I don't know if you have a picture, Carrie. Do you have a picture of it existing? So the back is still brown and the front is gray now. That's correct, because we got stopped. Um, we wanted to wholeheartedly finish it because, again, it reflects Susie's Boutique with everyone that knows that we're trying to get down there. Our Facebook page, our website, our everything has been promoting that we're going to be in a Rondequoit business and we're going to be down at Voyager Marina. So we don't want it not to look nice. Um, the things that I can see and say to you that would be, I mean, the paint's bought. We're not allowed on the property. We, we're, we're not allowed to turn the key. Mm -hmm. So we can't go forward. Like if you've gone down there and drove down there and taken a look at what it looks like, it looks terrible. I, but coming from a total nautical background, Perfect. it's not going to stay that way. And all I can do is give you the, give you that. I understand now about, you know, that you want more, uh, you know, you want to know what the building materials are as far as, like, the skirting goes. Well, I can tell you right now, then, they're one by six is pressure-treated lumber. I didn't know that I needed that at this point. Yeah, I, this is really more a communication issue and understanding right. what it, is needed for What the process are. Yeah. Uh, right, because you want to ask me about Canvas, I'll tell you all day long. You know, um, but these things, I, it's a learning. Um, I think that the, you guys will be surprised when this is all said and done. Um, because it, it will. Unfortunately, we work in the world of documentation. Right, and surprised in a good way. No, I'm, I'm really a positive person. I don't think negatively. I, I, I and, know, I and know. I do. Neither do I. And, right. And so, but, and I know that you're going to do, I, I know. We're going to do a smash-up job. You're, you're going to do it exactly. Right. right. Right now, they're you know, most of the board is to the point where we they want like more information and, and documentation on the aesthetic improvements to the trailer. Okay. That there's not adequate documentation describing what you have, and that um, at this point the application needs to be tabled because um, I think if it goes to a vote, it's going to be turned down, and that's not the way you, so, you want it to go. Okay. So it's so another it's, month out. Yes. Of can, being in the can garage. I, can, I, can I just say a couple things? The the aesthetics of this building are time sensitive. Mm -hmm. Painting this building has to happen when we can paint, okay. which is like this week. It's going to be warm enough we can paint. We tried to paint before the weather changed, and that's when we were halted. So it's not like we haven't tried or we didn't have a plan. Um, right. You referenced a, a checklist. Susan said she did not receive a checklist. Well, I, I received a checklist, questions. but it was when I met with Carrie and what I understood that most of it was to concern with Voyager Marina, who owns a property. I didn't know that it was about my shop itself. But it was supposed to be. Because it's on, you know, again, because I didn't know how this process worked. <clears throat> it's regrettable that the landlord didn't explain a lot of this because certainly he's right. well aware. Well, and, and, I, and I can't speak for him, so I can't yeah, say that may, either. Why not? You, might, you know, you could be right. Right. Um, you know, so I couldn't agree with you more. So what I would love is, you know, the board to think about the aspect of having, um, you know, I know like years ago um, I sold real estate for like 25 years and did real estate closings for attorneys, and there's a punch list. There's a, an after the fact, we actually do a legal closing, and there's items that needed to be addressed forever for me to keep my tendency well what if is is there a way we can do preliminary and uh and the only way is that we do final mm -hmm. yeah but can you do painting no preliminary? You, you can't you cannot pursue any improvements in furtherance of a plan until site plan approval has been issued no, I can't. would I, that's the rule that's, would the board want to contemplate or could the board contemplate a conditional approval sure I, I and then just certain things have to be done and approved by the chairman and staff and make sure that they're incorporated into the plan that would be fine if you want to give that discretion but yeah no work can be done until that final approval is granted but you can grant final approval conditioned on you That's know painting this color this awning needs to be there but I think that may be 
that may be the issue is the board's not sure what the conditions would be but if, if the board can come up with conditions or if the applicant can suggest conditions that the board is comfortable with and think you know fully address the design criteria standards and you think you have enough before you then you can grant conditional approval and we'll just have to make sure that the plans are updated to incorporate those conditions prior to the actual building permit being pulled well let's let's delineate then what our true concerns are is it skirting is a canvas around the, the the top of the building is it the sign let's let's delineate what it is to see if we can come to a conclusion as to what we could conditionally approve is it colors of the building I, I, I can't even tell from the artist's rendering whether the blue at the top is canvas or painted facade I, I believe mean, it's the, paint it's canvas well no I don't know the blue and white is you canvas. show me what you're you're pointing to no blue. that's that that is paint okay that's paint there right now on the other side of the the trailer that is non-painted it's a white I believe it's white at the top and a really awful brown <laughs> And the white is where we're changing it all to navy, which right. we've purchased the paint and it sits in the trailer. That's part of the structure, right. and then the awning was additional to that. Mm -hmm. And that's the blue and white straight yeah. portion. Yeah, and the awning just as a you know, if we get to the point of being able to do kind of a like you were speaking of a punch list or whatever um, conditions of this, you know, I'd want you to take into consideration an awning going up in. We're almost December now. The awning itself going up there and having any kind of weight of snow is going to be not good. Well, um, yeah, you wouldn't necessarily need to construct the construct awning. Construct it, right. That would be. Or have it up during the winter. If we give approval, it doesn't have to be painted until the spring either. I mean, right. right. I, all I'd we like to do out. it, though, because we're, it, it, it's a reflection on me. So, I mean, I definitely want it to well, be we able have to. Done. Is, is the issue at this juncture. Yeah, so and I'd like to get it. You already got the front part that people see gray. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the rendering <clears throat> that you provided, the, does that, is that awning, is that accurate in size and color and dimensions? Because I think, so one of the issues is, to the, the point that the, the board is making, they just need something to rely on. So right. when the product is complete, that they can look at that and say, that doesn't look like this. Right. Okay. So yeah. is that accurate or would, would you accurate. want to? It's accurate. I mean, from not a 3D. Sure. Okay. If you can get beyond that part of it, <clears throat> yes, it's accurate. That's about the, the area that we've taken. How far is the taken. awning sticking out from the building? Um, the awning sticking out from the building, we're going to move it up on the on the roof a little bit further so that we have headroom so that the, the porthole door shows. So coming off the top of the roof we're probably going to go out I would say probably about 10 feet 10 15 feet not a lot just the reason that we're doing the awning more than even to make it look good is we <coughs> do we do awnings we sew awnings so so if the board wanted to use this rendering as sort of part of yeah. the basis for its yep. approval is there anything on the rendering that is not and is that is no longer accurate or that is the only not thing that uh, yeah the only thing that's on that that's not accurate is the signage, which I provided carry with the signage that would go on there. Which we got today. You got today, yeah. Correct. <clears throat> yep. Yep. Correct. And you so have no desire at this juncture to put the signage on the top of the building. You would put it. I would love to, but I, again, I don't know what that entails. Yeah, I mean, I, think I don't know that I would love that, but I don't either. But <clears throat> you know, I just want to make sure that we're all on. You it's know, not yep. part of the current application. No, it's How, not part of the application. <laughs> at that all. awning that's sticking out 10 or 15 feet is mm -hmm. going to be extend into your parking area. Mm -hmm. How are you supporting that? You know, that uh, off the trailer. But you can't, you, so you're going to have an awning that cantilevers out 15 it's feet? Su it's supported off the trailer, the structure it's of it. You can do it a couple different ways. You angle a support back? Mm -hmm, probably. Mm -hmm. But see, right. she's the awning the, queen, so I'll let her speak uh, on that. You, <laughs> that's the, the you can do a roof support, and it could be a galvanized frame. Again, that's so it's the, a solid It's structure. a perfect example of why we need detail, because... I mean, it can be done a couple different ways. Well, it can be done a lot of ways. Some are not good ways that are going to collapse well, in a yeah, windstorm. Yeah, I can't tell you right now. Right, and that's why we need a plan. Support that way, or if we can do a rollout awning, that's a, a lighter weight structure that will roll in and out. We would but, probably keep right. it out, but and that's why we need a plan. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I I I hate to be a stickler, but 
we have to be able to see a plan and know what's detailed and, and to try to hash it out and just hit the the main four or five things well, isn't going to accomplish what we need to do need on a list that would meet the the um, I'm sorry, the, the specifications that Carrie listed out of there. We meet some of those already. Yeah, I, I think the idea would be to work with, with an architect or an engineer and to work through these the design criteria and the site plan checklist and to make sure that you have everything incorporated. That's what the board's looking to see is a fully a fully designed engineered plan. Okay. Right? Is that right? When's the last time a building that was put in Voyager's area on that with the Harbor District went like when's the last time something went in that had to go through um, that design? An procedure? engineer. The well, a couple of things. I'd have to check the records. We don't have right. that I off the top of my head. But just so so you're aware that this district, the district regulations were probably put into effect after many of the buildings on Voyager Marina were constructed. So the likelihood is that the buildings that are there now predate the current zoning district and the regulations that are required, um, which is pretty common so that those buildings would be pre-existing non-conforming as far as zoning compliance might go and also as far as building permits right. or building codes. I was wishing that Navy Point hadn't left because they're, know, they're within 10 years. Um, so I just they used was to be curious. Where, where, where our trailer, they used to be there. And we can, we can <coughs> I was going to ask, can, can you spend a little time with them and just explain what the things that we normally see are on an application like this? Yes, and ju just as a point, I mean, the applicant did um, in quick turnaround, try to get on the agenda after receiving notification from the town that they were in violation, which is, um, you know, they were limited in terms of time yeah. mm -hmm. trying to get an application before you. So that's just so you're aware. <clears throat> okay. And I, I will say, I mean, we did talk at the workshop that we needed some drawings that indicated parking and storage on site, and I don't really see that as part of the amended application either. The, you know, I apologize but the, um, for interrupting you, but on the current map that I gave you today, they extended our area right up to the road. Um, it's all depicted as parking now. Um, and the last time when we met at the workshop, we discussed the fact of parking spots versus that we have all different beams of boats that will come in on trailers. And you were concerned with the turnaround space. So I achieved the turnaround space by going to the landlord and saying I needed all the space to the road and it's on the map um, so that we had the room to turn around we had the room to park and again there's letters in the file from Voyager Marina offering any any spot on their property for me to put boats or customers if need be um, so I, I really think that I did the best I could in answering that question it, and I, I probably agree with you but it's not to the level of documentation that we're necessarily accustomed to. You know, I, okay. Yeah, and if I if I would have probably had more time, um, I submitted it quickly to try to get the girls out of the garage and into a location. So, um, you know, I submitted it. They told me that they put it in last minute, and that shows that I didn't have an engineer and I didn't have that. Also, I'm looking at um, the financial burden that that puts on me trying to go forward um, by even all of this um, instead of being able to set up shop meet the criteria that you want and in essence still start to make the funds that we need to pay for everything else um, you know I one thing Voyager did do I haven't seen the bill yet for the maps for me um, but as far as like the 22 copies and the the idea of taking away from my business to try to you know meet all these things, it's exciting, but economically, it's tough. Unfortunately, it's kind of the cost of doing business and right, right. So I guess you could say that shame on us that we didn't recommend an engineer at the at the workshop. Well, I, yeah, if I would have known, maybe I. No, we did. We'd recommend an engineer. We did say an engineer? About that. Mm. As far as, 
I'm, I'm sorry if I'm going back to the awning thing again, but if that, if we had access to an awning that could be installed immediately, like an RV awning that met the aesthetic that you're looking for. I, I don't I, I'm wondering, I'm wondering about the awning at this juncture. Right. Only, so because, it, only because it couldn't it be a mute point at this point you know, I mean, because, because we have nautical everything else we have nautical the stairway that's there isn't completed yet because again I got halted but the stairway is going to have nautical lines through it you know where the railing is at the top and it the it's going to be nautical the whole thing it pylons at the bottom of it it's going to be nautical but we didn't know what we had to provide um, I think the it's going to be nice to have an awning, but it's not something that, you know, if if I could take that off the equation. Well, <clears throat> I know? think the not awning kind of adds to the aesthetic appeal and the nautical appeal of the building, so I don't know that you'd want necessarily to take that off. But right. there is a design guideline for the River Harbor District. Um, you need to show how your building will comply with that through a drawing that indicates the material and means that you're doing that aesthetic improvement and right now we don't have that okay can I go back to what's your minimum then that we need to pull out of that design that's the, the that you're looking we're for. not here to design it for you um, we can guide you but, but we're trying to make it so that but it's, it's not going to happen acceptable. tonight no, no. Know. it's not going to happen okay. tonight I don't Let believe go. okay and I, I don't know that any amount of additional explanation that you can do at the dais there is going to help at this point no okay. um, I mean, we just, we're bound by the code mm -hmm. um, and compliance with the code and compliance, compliance with the site plan review checklist. And um, I think we've got to the point where we, we can't go any further without a, more documentation. Right. So do we have to move, Mr. Chairman, to table this particular application uh, with we just leave the open. approval of, I thought you had to table it, Jay. Yeah. I think the applicant requests that the application be tabled until uh, further deck. We accept it, right. their request to table. So if you're amenable, we table the application until next month. Um, and again, you would also have at that time um, access to the workshop again because it's still open. Right. Um, and a lot of things can be presented there if it's in two weeks, if that can work for you. Mm -hmm. um, but we need your consent to approve a table. So you have to sort of ask to well, I really don't have any choice. So yeah, so I would ask for that. Okay. We'll accept your request to table. Favor? I'll, I'll, I'll move to table it, table the application. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> we have some meeting minutes to review. Did anyone have a chance to review the meeting minutes? Yeah, I'll move approval of it. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Leaving. Aye. <laughs> 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 <Second. laughs> Meeting adjourned. Happy turkey to everybody. Thank you, you too. <laughs>